So this is a video about the Genesee coal mine open cut operation and uh, we can see here some images of a drag line, a dump truck and the plant itself. Now we start off with the camera, the aerial camera being located a little bit to the south of the plant and moving north and uh, coming up now we see the uh, edge of the open cut on the northern on the southern boundary of the open cut and looking on the picture we see the Genesee power plant on the top and the cooling pond on to the left on the top and uh, we just keep moving to, to the north now and uh, there's a long trench here which is the the cut of the drag line as it's moved across country to dig coal. So those heaps you see there behind in the middle of the picture more or less would be the uh, overburden that's been removed uh, before that the drag line then actually took the coal out and put it in the dump trucks to be hauled back to the plant for burning and creating power. So the uh, camera is just proceeding at approximately 30 kilometers an hour at a height of around about 100 meters over this operation. And we can see that there's a lot of water sitting now in where the uh, operation was. And that water is likely a combination of um, surface runoff and also water that seeped out of the, the ground from aquifers under the ground in that area. So very likely a combination there on the bottom. Uh, on the left of the picture it's most likely a more uh, surface runoff from rain and so on that's accumulated. Now you can see <coughs> we're dealing with quite a big area here of a dug up area and now the camera is swinging towards the north a bit more and we see some grain fields and I believe that would have been restored area that's been mined previously and now been put into crop is the most likely reason for why you see that there. And uh, this gives us an excellent view of uh, what's actually happening in the open cut. The highway, uh, 770 north-south, is in the top part of the picture running left to right. And you can't really see much from there at all if you travel there. It's just uh, when you get up in the air and look down, that's when you can see what's really going on here. So right now, as in November, of 2019, they're actually putting in a 30-inch uh, natural gas line into the into that power station. Uh, so they're starting to generate power now with natural gas, and I believe that uh, it's about 30 kilometer long or something like that. I believe, and uh, I think it's going to come from the Trans Canada main trunk line that runs all the way from uh, way up in the north and right down into the U.S. So now we are traveling east and uh, kind of looking around here and just looking at what's below us. So uh, uh, just a matter of looking down and as best we can. The, what we're seeing in front of there would be a haul road from when the drag line was on your right and the, the dump trucks would have been coming out to pick up the coal and hauling it back to the to the power station. So the the power station itself and the coal mine operations are quite distinct. Uh, the the coal mining operation is done by by Westmoreland Mining, uh, which specializes in doing that, and uh, the power station is owned uh, by Capital Power, and. Uh, I'm not sure who else partners are. Okay, so now we're coming back towards that open cut, and we can see into the side of the uh, of the cut there how 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 it's stratified, and it's kind of a little similar for when you're traveling down one of the like the Red Deer River and look up in the sides, you get all these strata as you go down, and and this is of course the same thing because. The, all, all of Alberta pretty much is sedimental and uh, with a few exceptions and you get all these layers of sediments that's been put down over millions and millions of years 
and coal tends to be in the top part, I guess. So now we are. The camera has moved east five kilometers and is facing west. So now we are, we are about five kilometers away from where we were before, and we are moving towards where we were before. And you can see the power station just vaguely up in the top right-hand corner of the video, and. Uh, we have all these ponds. There's a lot of water sitting here, as we can see. And now we'll see, we're zooming into. There are all kinds of birds that live in this water. You can see them down there, little black specks like fleas. There are hundreds of them. So I zoomed in on that, and so just to show you. And uh, so the question is, what is the quality of that water that they're living in? What, you know, I mean, I don't know what it is, but I would be very surprised if it wasn't highly contaminated by all kinds of things. And I don't know how those birds, how well they do in that water. They seem to like it there, so they must, there must be something in that water that they really like. But uh, what side effects there might be from that, I have no idea. And I think that should be tested. I think the company should have the environmental people, this is West, Westmoreland Mining, should have had the environmental people out there to test that water, in, especially in light of the fact that there are hundreds of birds here. So here's another bunch of them, and uh, you can see them here as they come into the, into the zoomed-in uh, footage here. There's black specks on the water. I'm just trying to show them. Now we zoom out again and we keep moving. Uh, moving uh, we are moving towards the west from the east and we are moving towards the area that we looked at before when we looked east from the west. So we're trying to cover the whole area. And uh, here's another bunch of birds. Uh, check them out. And all along the shore as well as in the water. I'm not sure what kind they are. I can't. I haven't been close enough to see, but there certainly are some. They swim around. Now here, look carefully and see how they take off there. How the birds take off? They get spooked. They could be from the camera noise of above them. Not sure. So we'll just keep keep moving along here. And here I'm zooming in even more birds. So there are, it looks like there are several colonies of them. This was done in about August, I guess. So, so they're really, they're really, you know, I don't know how they're doing there, but as you can see, there's an awful lot of water being trapped here, and I'm, I'm guessing that this is, is groundwater. A lot of it is groundwater, I think, that seeped out into these uh, open cuts. And I'm not sure what, that may have done to the aquifers in the general area. I, do, I don't know if, if any wells have been affected anywhere around. I don't know. Anyway, it's pretty interesting to be able to do this kind of thing, to send a camera into the air and survey this, this landscape. It's, uh, it's almost like another planet. And uh, the size of it is also quite surprising because one would have thought the company would have been restoring the land as they mined it, but there doesn't appear to have been any work done here for several years, or restoration work. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, there seems to be an awful lot of restoration work that needs to be done in this area. And, uh, and there needs to be environmental testing on the water and so on. Uh, that I haven't seen anything on Westmoreland's website that indicates that they're doing any of this kind of work. So, uh, who knows. Now, if you look right up in the top middle of the picture, you'll see this sort of white speck. Now, that is the drag line that is now operating there in that area and uh, digging out coal and uh, sending it to the, plant, to the power station. So, we'll just keep moving up along and looking here and... Uh, and, and, and see what goes on. Now here, there appears to be another haul road here that the, the, where the trucks can come and go, or have done in the past, to get the coal out. Uh, 
and all these heaps would be from the drag line. So now I zoom in on the drag line just to quickly zoom out again. And now the we're now at about uh, approximately three kilometers away from where we started. So now we're going to return on the same path. And uh, so we're now seeing the same landscape but from an opposite angle. Now, as a matter of interest, uh, Capital Power, they have purchased all the land, even to the east of, of, of where we are right now, and also all the land to the south on the right-hand side. Uh, so uh, no one can access that legally anymore, and all the public roads that used to be there have been, uh, have been gated off, so you cannot move into that area at all. And presumably they bought that land with the idea of mining it, or just keep moving further south in the year ahead. So uh, they, they are certainly making sure that they have lots of coal deposits available to them, depending on how, how this conversion to uh, gas may or may not happen, or to what extent it will happen to natural gas. So uh, it, it effectively stops the public from looking in on what's going on in here, and I think the public needs to know what's happening in their backyard because uh, I think a lot more restoration work should be done than what has been done to date. And also those birds, if it proves that, that if it's uh, shown that this water is damaging to the health of this bird population, the, it's possible to control them in this day and age with, uh, with uh, drones can be easily scared away and it wouldn't cost the company a lot to make sure that these birds would not nest here or stay here because you can go in with drones you can have that mimic uh, hawk hawk cries that will scare them off and keep them away and I believe they do in that kind of thing at Fort McMurray so there's no reason why that couldn't be done here so here we zoom in again and you can see all the little bird all the birds there and there are a lot of them. We can only we only see some of them. So we'll just keep flying back and can see the cut there. We're just flying along the old cut. Uh, I can see the black material, which I would presume is coal, may not be up to the standard that they need, but they've dug out a lot here. It would have taken quite a few years to dig out all this material, I would think. And we're talking about very big areas being disturbed here, right in next to to uh, you know to the to the North Saskatchewan. Here we got birds again, seen from the other angle. So it gives you a sense of how many birds there are here. You know, there's just they like fleas. They're everywhere. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what they eat down there, but there must be something that makes it worth their while to stay there, whatever it is. Anyway, that's pretty well the end of the show. Thanks for watching.